Hello everybody and welcome to this webinar on getting started an introduction to BTEC Tech Awards from 2022 and we are looking at the music practice qualification. My name is Tom Howell, I'm a digital trainer for Pearson, um, I'm also a standards verifier and an examiner in the music and music technology sector and I've been involved in qualification development and assessment at Pearson as well. So I'm a, a standards verifier and an examiner on this course. I also deliver the course as well, which I think is a really important thing um, to be able to help you to be able to deliver this to the best of our abilities. So today we're looking at the Tech Award in Music Practice and it's the new qualification for first teaching from 2022. So the aims of today's uh, webinar is that we're going to gain an understanding of the purposes of the qualification and its structure. We're going to look at the internal assessments and the new Pearson set assessments and how we would go around marking them, the process for moderation, resubmissions and retakes. We will um, have a look at external assessments, the overall grading of the qualification, when assessments are available, um, possible delivery models and uh, looking at resets and then some timelines and support. So the BTEC Tech Awards are this new suite of qualifications which are delivered to Key Stage for, for learners. They are designed to be able to enable learners to apply their knowledge and are to be delivered alongside GCSEs as a suite of qualifications. They were redesigned to meet the DFE's latest technical guidance and are available in the open group of Progress 8. Assessment takes place using a combination of vocational assignments and practical tasks, um, as well as some written assessments. Um, we are a creative subject, so almost all of our stuff is done through practical and task based assessments. So the reason that the Tech Awards were redeveloped by Pearson is because in September 2020, the guidance from the Department for Education was changed about what qualifications could be included on the 2024 performance tables. To meet those requirements, Pearson submitted these redeveloped Tech Awards and took the opportunity to review and update the portfolio. You might teach other subjects within your centre or you might deliver other Tech Awards, and these are all the ones that are available for 2022. So let's dive straight in and look at the qualification that we're referring to today, and that is the music qualification in music practice. For those of you that might have already delivered this qualification before in its old version, you'll see that the component names are the same. I'm aware that some people might be moving across to this qualification from the first award, and I'll make reference to that as I go through today's session as well. Um, and also there are some people I'm sure are new to BTEC, and hopefully I'll be able to help you on that um, as well. Okay, so the way the qualification is structured is you can see there are three components, components one, two, and three, and these are designed to be delivered in order. Um, component three is a synoptic unit, which means that it pulls together all the teaching and learning that has happened in the first two units. You'll notice in that first column, the guided learning hours. So you might want to have a look at your planning to, to see um, how long those units would take to be delivered, depending on how many hours per week you have your learners. The qualification weighting, as you can see, is 30% for each of the internal units and 40% for the external units. All of them are marked out of 60 grades. And for those of you that have taught BTEC previously, you'll see that this is a change. So we have marks out of 60 for each unit. It's no longer past merit and distinction, but I'll come on to that later on. In terms of the type of assessment, this again is new for those people that have been teaching BTEC for a while. We have something called PSAs or Pearson Set Assignments. The, you can see that for component one, it has two tasks and for component two, there is one, both of which are externally moderated. Now, it's important to just have a quick uh, word about what PSAs are. So they're Pearson Set Assignments. And what that means is they are very similar. They will look very similar to the authorised assignment briefs, but they will change um, with each series. They are set by Pearson, they'll be marked by you, and they will be moderated by Pearson. There's also some uh, approximate length of the assessment for those two, so 12 hours for component one and 15 hours for component two. And again, you'll see that those are supervised sessions. That's not supervised sessions in, in an exam hall or anything like that, but they are supervised sessions that mean that the all the learning, or sorry, all the work that takes place for those assessments needs to take place in school in a setting on which you have control and an overview. Both of the internal component PSAs are available twice a year. They are released in October 
and February, ready for the moderation windows, which are December, January and May, June. So those are the things that you might need to take um, into account when you are planning your course. So for example, looking at component one, if you know it's going to be released in October and that the assessment would need to be finished and all wrapped up, ready to send to your moderator in December, January, then you might have a look and realise that you might not be able to get 36 guided learning hours in in that first year. So component one might mean that you're going to have a look at that happening in May, June. So those are just some of the considerations that you're going to have to take um, into account when you look at the structure of the qualifications. Component three is uh, the external unit. You can see it's uh, weighted 40% um, as opposed to the other two, uh, which are weighted for 30%. It's an external task. As I said, it's synoptic. It draws together everything that is pulled, um, that has been taught in the previous two components, and it is externally marked. So once the assessment window is finished, that work is sent off to an examiner who will mark it. Um, again, it's uh, 23 hours, this time of uh, 23 hours of supervised sessions, and this only has one window that happens. So it's a January release and you will send it to your examiner in May or June. And the first time you can do that is summer 2024, so in the second year of the course. It's designed to be a terminal assessment. Um, as I keep saying, it's there to draw together the knowledge and understanding that your learners have um, picked up along the whole course. Uh, just an important point at the bottom there in italics where it says that the components are interrelated and best seen as part of an integrated whole rather than distinct study areas and hopefully you'll see as we go through today's session that they do flow through from one to another and enabling the learners to develop their skills from when they first join you right at the start of the course right to the end when they submit um, component three in May of their second year. <clears throat> um, I, when I do go through the course, I am actually going to start with component three, the external one, because I think it's important when planning our sessions that we are um, a qualification that we think about where our learners need to be at the end. And that will really inform what we need to do for the sessions um, for the components before that. It's really tempting to open the specification on page one of component one and start planning from there. But I think you'd put yourself as a disadvantage by doing so. Um, because you need to know where do your learners need to be when they get to the end of component three. So in terms of external assessment, let's start off with that at the moment. So for those of you that have already taught it, there's very little change based on the current tech award qualifications, you'll be pleased to know. So if you've already um, been through that process with the um, previous tech awards, then the qualification is very similar. Um, like I said, it's terminal, so sat at the end of the qualification. I'm going to give you an overview of the component in a second. I'm going to open up the, um, the sample assessment material and go through that with you. Um, we'll talk about the terminal assessment rule and the format of the assessment when it's released the windows that you can have um, and the kind of question types and mark schemes. It's high control, which means it's invigilated under exam conditions, and there is no longer a minimum grade outcome required to gain the qualification. So when you sit the qualification, that counts as um, as a, uh, a submission, and then you, that means that uh, you will you can get the qualification. So there's no longer a need for learners to get a level one pass in order to pass the entire qualification. And then we will also refer to resets as well. OK, I'm just going to come out of my presentation and go to um, go to the, uh, the, the SAM or the sample assessment material. So um, let's just quickly though have a look on the specification here so this is the specification and I've just quickly uh, jumped across to component three responding to a music brief so you'll see that this is what the qualification uh, what the assessment is when your learners get to the end of the course this is what they're going to need to do so they're given the develop the opportunity to develop and present music in response to a given music brief so they're going to have to um, have a look at performing stylistically accurate cover versions, creating original music and the stylistic use of a door. So that's digital audio workstation. Um, so as a quick summary of the assessment, essentially, they build on that knowledge of understanding of components one and two. They're going to do a task worth 60 marks. The supervised assessment period, period is a maximum of uh, 23 hours, I should say, and should be arranged in the period timetabled by Pearson. So you will get a window. Um, each year you'll know the window in which you have to timetable those 23 hours. There is a brief, uh, there's a scenario for the brief that will also include 10 pieces of music and a range of styles that have been covered in component one. They'll be required to use one of these pieces of music. 
The music is created and produced must be saved as a digital audio file and part final performances as a video. They'll all respond individually to the, to the brief. And this is important to note, they may perform with others in response to the brief. If they're supported by others, they will need to be playing a significant, unique and individual part within the performance and will be assessed on their individual contribution. Um, it's important to note that some of the grades, and you'll see this in a second, some of the grades are about how the learner has responded to the brief and created their own musical material. So it's really important that when they um, submit their portfolio for this, that they make it clear what they have told other learners to do. And that will really enable them to get the most points at grades, sorry, the most marks that they can for th that aspect of creation. Um, so that might, for example, um, write, be something like they've written out a particular drum part in a particular style for a colleague who's going to play along with them. They've put on dynamics, um, maybe some technical markings as well to ensure that that learner is playing in a specific style that has been asked of them. Um, OK, so this is also important so if they are working with one another the nature of the assessment and the requirement for the individual response means it's not possible to assess more than one individual response from a single group performance so if you were to um, have a learner who's playing the guitar and alongside them there is a singer and a drummer that would only be able to be submitted for that one learner who's the guitarist you would then need uh, two other submissions of two different performances for the other two learners um, any video recordings must be one continuous shot without edits and it must be saved to a clearly labeled digital folder and I'll go through that in a second. Okay, so that's an overview of the of what learners need to be able to do. Let's have a, a, a bit of a look at what they're going to be assessed on. So how to respond to the brief, applying the musical skills in response to the brief, presenting their final product and commenting on the creative process. So all of this is going to need to be taught and you're probably going to teach this in the two or three months leading up to um, the assessment coming out. So then you're going to have to look at how they might respond to a brief. They're going to have to make reference to this in their plan and in their evaluation and how they can meet those demands of the brief, um, making sure that they're considering the constraints and the intentions. They then go on and um, actually apply those skills to create their response. So that's about their organizational skills and their planning skills. So you're going to have to teach learners about what they need to do in terms of getting prepared. Um, and you'll have to do some teaching on how they can refine those skills for their product. So um, and that will be about whether they can create music or perform or their door skills, their digital audio works, workstation skills. Uh, they'll have to be able to refine their musical material and think about their personal management and then at the end you're going to have to do some teaching and learning on them about how they can review so what um, how they review work based on client needs and what it is that um, they've done well and their strengths and areas for development um, how they present their work how they uh, comment on the process and you're going to have to do some teaching and learning on that commentary OK, so that's the that's the unit. Let's have a look at the assessment itself. So we have here the sample assessment material. So sample assessment material. Um, so I'm just going to change the view on here. So um, sample assessment material is and an, to give you an idea of what it might look like. Um, so you can see it looks like an exam paper. So they'll get this set task um, and this will come out in January or February and we'll, you will need a timetable 23 hours over a 12 week process uh, period for them to be able to submit it in uh, May. There are two really important uh, documents that you need with this one. One is the um, instructions for conducting external assessment, which you can find on the Pearson website, or just type that into your search engine. And the other is every year there will be an administrative support guide that will go through exactly what it is that you need to do to complete the course. Um, there's always some guidance. Um, which is on the uh, inside page for teachers and tutors. And I would recommend that you read that every year. Make sure you've read it through um, as soon as it comes out so you're really clear about what might happen. Some small things might change year on year. And so it's, it's definitely worth reading that through. Um, 
this then goes through exactly what it is that the learners need to do. So they have to do their preparatory work for activity one. Um, so this is why I want to go through component three first with you, even though it comes at the end of the course, this is what you're going to have to prepare your learners to do. So they're going to have to make sure that they in during these four hours of um, uh, supervised time that they're able to do some research on the paper so they're given four hours of research time um, and they need to produce bullet points <clears throat> and up to one side of a four handwritten paper which they can then take through for activity one so you're going to have to do some teaching and learning throughout the course to make sure that learners are able to research styles and be able to find um, the key features of those styles and that the learners are able to then find um, the, for example, the listen to the tracks and they're going to be able to find the tablature or the notation for the track that they want to learn. Maybe they need to source particular samples or instrument styles um, if they're using uh, their door. OK, so um, that's the first activity they do. And then they go into a formal supervised um, two hours scheduled by, by, by you. So they complete activity one on a computer using a digital template and then it's important to note that these are bullet points here so they can take in their prepared notes they access a copy of the digital template you cannot give them any direct guidance no support in writing or editing and it must be completed independently by the learner so just a little admin point there you might need to when planning for this assessment talk to your it providers or um, people in your center network managers just to make sure that learners will have a login that gives them only access to these parts of their network. Learners cannot access the internet during these two hours, nor they can they access their previous work. So um, you will probably need exam user names to be created for your learners. It can happen in your classroom. You can invigilate them yourselves. There's no need for the external invigilators. At the end of this two hours, once they've come up with their plan, they're going to save a PDF and they're going to secure it. Um, it's going to be secured, stored securely by the teacher in a digital folder. And on the admin support guide, it's really clear um, how you need to label those files and how you need to name the folders. Um, they can take in with them those prepared notes from those four hours of preparatory work. Those don't need to be submitted to Pearson with the final outcomes, but you need to make sure that you've retained them securely. OK, so what is the task? Well, they are going to uh, again, there's more guidance here on activity two. I'm not going to read through all of these. Um, we're going to jump straight through now to the task. So here's the instructions for learners. They need to go through one of these two following pathways, creating and performing and creating and producing. Again, I'm starting with component three because it's important that you know this for their teaching and learning. And it'll be important in component two that they know that at some point when they get to the start of component three, they are going to go down one of these two pathways. Learners need to plan their time, submit all the required evidence, and this is what they need to submit. Their initial response to the music brief saved as a PDF, their video or audio recording of their musical material and their commentary. It must be placed in that label. They also need to hand in a learner authentication and record form. So this is an example of what they might have. So they've got the brief here, the contest. Um, there's a music contest called Fresh Ears. They're asking learners to submit work. More than cover versions, they want reworkings audience was will vote for their favorite style submissions should be selected from the list below um, using one of the given styles and should be a minimum of one minute and 30 seconds long now i think um if we look here we should select one of the following musical styles so we've got four um styles there rock and roll jazz edm and synth pop and you've been given they've been given a list of uh, tracks here the Bee Gees, Europe, um, Hound Dog etc. So what learners are going to have to do is they're going to have to choose one of those tracks, one of those styles and they're going to have to rework one into the other. This is why I think it's really important um, thinking about this right now um, before you've even started delivering component one because you need to think about the skills that learners are going to need to have. If they haven't studied any of these styles, you need to be really confident that they've got those research skills, that they know the vocabulary of music, that they can understand the terminology when they're researching jazz. Do they know about syncopation? Do they know the word extended chords? Does seventh chords make sense to them, etc.? If they're researching synth pop, are they going to be able to understand the research that they're doing on different artists and the technology and production techniques that were used? So 
it's really important to bear that in mind. Your learners may not have studied any of these four styles before they get there. It's pretty likely they won't know or won't have performed um, or recorded the 10 songs. So can you make sure that when they get to this point towards the end of year 11, that they're confident in being able to source the materials that they need to learn that piece? Maybe it's downloading the lyrics, listening to um, recordings of it and um, being able to find the tablature notation, etc. Um, again, it's also important that they remember that the genre must be different from the original genre. OK, so that's the task, um, either creating and performing one style, one piece of music, and it will give them ideas about what they need to think about. That might be something that they need to think about in their plan. So it gives them a, a stimulus of what they can talk about in their plan. And um, they have 23 hours to do so. Of those 23 hours, four are for the um, the the first four hours are for research. Then there's two hours in um, exam conditions in which they write their plan. There's one hour at the end in which they do their evaluation. And in between that, there are um, 17 hours, which they use, uh, I think it might be 16 hours, sorry, which they use to um, create the product itself. So that is component three. I'm going to jump across to uh, the PowerPoint again. Um, and just go through some of these things. So the terminal assessment rule means that if your learners take that uh, take a component three before the end of the course, then the last one that they take will be the one that counts, even if the first one was a higher grade. We've looked at the format of the assessment. The task release date, like I said, is in January for uh, a May submission. Um, the windows of assessment, there is just one, so it's January until May. Um, we've looked through the question types. Um, we haven't looked at the mark scheme yet. I'll go back to that. High control, so invigilated under exam conditions. So you are going to have to sign a um, form to say that it is all the learner's own work, and so are they. So you just need to make Make sure you can be really confident that all of that work is theirs and um, let's just quickly look at the marking so um, I'm just going to rotate this round um, so here is the mark scheme and you'll see that it is using uh, bands and marks for each band I'm not going to go through all of them. So let's just have a look here. So when they're doing their plan, that's activity one. And we can see that we've got the, the four bands here. So uh, their initial response to their brief. We need to think about how they're responding to the brief. So remember in the teaching learning bit, they need to think about ways in which they respond to a brief. So they need to make reference to that, to how their response is, um, is, is, going back, is referring to the brief. Um, an explanation of how their musical material addresses the requirements of the brief, um, how their musical element styles and playing or producing techniques which are relevant to brief will be used, so how they plan to do that, and obviously we need to make sure they're making reference to the, the correct vocabulary of the musical elements, and um, the resources and skills development that's going to need that they're going to need. So it might be that they realize that they're going to have to um, produce a, a drum track to accompany them, or perhaps as a vocalist, they might need to uh, create some kind of uh, backing track or learn some basic keyboard skills. So there'd be an expectation that in their plan, they're hitting those four bullet points. Um, and that's how they're, they're marked. So um, we then have activity 2A, which is the creating the musical product. So this is the creative interpretation. So when I said before about um, learners working as a group, it's really important that your learners can show that they have told the other learners in their group performances exactly what to do. So that might be, like I said, through some basic notation, um, which can be submitted as part of their evaluation. They might say, for example, I was really good at getting my learner to play in a punk style. Uh, my sorry, my drummer to play in a punk style because I notated the uh, the drum patterns that I wanted like this and I told them where the fills were going to be and here's my um, here's the stuff that I get here's a photograph of the what I gave them um, so uh, again that's how you're gonna, gonna mark that so we've got the three bands the four bands sorry and the three um, traits within each one um, we then have 2B, which is the actual creating and performing. So how well um, do the learners perform the technical music skill in the final product? And then if they're doing um, production, 
if they're uh, creating and producing, sorry, I'll just rotate this round. Then there is another mark scheme here for the technical um, skills for producing. So they do either this or this. So of the 20 mark schemes, 20, uh, mark, 20 mark marking grids, they would only use one or the other, depending if they're performing or producing. And then finally, there is another mark grid here. I think I might have gone around too much. There we go for the quality of the presentation. Have they hit the the um, what has been required of them in the brief? So that might be like duration, or if there's a certain quality that's being being asked for. And then the final mark scheme is about their evaluation. So there's a final marking grid on how well they have evaluated their product. Okay, let's move on now to internal assessment. So internal assessment is um, the one where there's been the biggest amount of change in this qualification. So we now have something called Pearson set assignments. These are going to replace authorised assignment briefs or your own centre produce internally set assignments. They're based on a vocational scenario and they're broken down into tasks. The same skills will be assessed every year, so you can plan um, for your teaching and learning and your assessment, but the context might change. You must use these to assess internally assess components from now on in order to meet the new performance criteria. So um, essentially, if you think of them like authorised assignment briefs, they come out twice a year, you choose when your learners are going to sit them and they use that assignment brief for that, um, that series. Um, no more producing your own internal uh, assignment briefs either, and that means there's also no internal verification of assignment briefs. There's all, the other ch big change is mark schemes. So these are going to replace the learning aims, and they're based on the same skills as all the previous qualifications, but it gives us a consistent structure across all the internal components. They are fully compensatory with each component. Um, and I think that's really important. So as, as a, a teacher, I, I really welcome this. So we all know that there might be some learners who have got really good ability to perform. They might have really good technical ability. However, they are unable to maybe write um, at quite that high level that they can perform. So they can't explain what it is they've done. Currently, with the um, pass merit distinction, if they get a pass on the trait about explaining their work, but they get a distinction on their ability to perform, they are capped at a pass because they're capped at that lowest grade. Because they're now compensatory, they might get fewer marks for their ability to explain. Perhaps they'll be on that first band and they might get four to six marks, but their ability to perform will really raise that overall mark up because they might get 15 or 20 marks for their performance. And I'll go through that on the mark grids in a second. Um, and there will be full marking training provided later on um, in 2022. So, um, Let's go and have a look at one of these PSAs. Um, so the Pearson set assignments, I'm just going to come out of this PDF here and come into another one. So um, here's one of the PSAs. This is the one for um, component one. So we have these instructions to learners. Um, you can see we, we have the cover and then we have the introduction about what it is that you need to do, the levels of control, um, formal uh, formal supervision. Again, really important to read all these. Then we have the instructions to learners. So it'll tell them what they need to do. Five hours for task one, seven hours for task two. Um, it will tell them what they need to do um, about plagiarism, etc. And let's have a look at the task. So you can see that the format is really similar to a um, uh, authorised assignment brief. Um, you'll have this series and year pre-printed on there for you. Um, and then we'll have this vocational scenario. Now, the only thing that can be changed is this in italics. Everything else must be kept the same. But you can see they've got these four styles on the theme of contrast. You look at this styles portfolio, they do task one, and it will tell them exactly what it is that they need to do and what the marks are. They've got task two, which is then to create um, uh, music products. They complete task two, tells them what to hand in and what to submit, and that this is out of 36 marks. So let's have a look at that mark scheme. Oh, you will also get this guidance for teachers. So it'll tell you general guidance on how to manage it, the specific guidance for this particular 
um, assignment. Again, that might change. So you need to have a look at that um, in detail before you give it to your learners and what you need to do to prepare the evidence ready to send. Again, there will be administrative support guides for the internal units as well. Um, your opportunity to contextualize this assignment. So that's just the bit in italics like I showed you um, and what you need to do before and during the assignment. But let's jump down to, um, I think I've got a bookmark uh, here. And it hasn't, it hasn't shown up. Okay, so let's jump down to here, the assessor guidance. So this is important because this is what is new. So um, it tells you what your role as the assessor is and what you can and can't do. Um, and it, when acting in the dual roles as teacher and assessor, what you need to make clear about your responsibilities. So in terms of marking, you're going to use this best fit approach. And like we've said, there's going to be more um, guidance and more detailed training on marking coming up. But as you're required to make this first holistic judgment. And after you've placed that holistic judgment um, into a band, you then need to look within that mark band, at a more refined judgment as to where they are in that band. Um, so the, the further guidance, if the learner's response meets the requirements of a descriptor fully, you should be prepared to award full marks within the band. If it only barely meets the requirements of the descriptor, then it should be at the bottom of the mark band. Um, the bottom mark in the mark band is used for a learner's response that is the weakest that can be expected in that mark band. The middle marks of the mark band are for a learner's response that is a reasonable match to the descriptor. So I will come on to that in one second. And when there's no evidence, they should get a zero. Um, so, oh, and it's important to remember in the middle, it's some descriptors that are fully met and others that are only barely met. Let's have a look at what these might look like. So we shouldn't think of these as past merit distinction anymore. That needs to um, be, uh, be left at the door. And we're now thinking in terms of marks. So our learner has handed in some work. We have a look through it. We think about the, the holistic grade. Do we think it shows good knowledge and that most of the points are supported by relevant examples? If we do, then we think it's somewhere within that band. Now, um, it's then important to remember that good knowledge is in the middle of that band, so eight. So if they get um, that, those descriptors are the middle of, of band, so eight marks would be good knowledge and that most of the points are supported by relevant examples. And then we have a look and we think, oh, actually, um, almost all the points are, so I think we can, we can be moving that way, but we're not of quite a comprehensive knowledge, so that might be that we put them at nine marks there. Um, if we're having a look and we think, actually, um, there's a, there's a few more errors than we might like and that there's not, um, there's not relevant examples. There's examples for all of them, but one or two aren't relevant. Then we might put them, think that we're putting them at seven. And then we might check here, actually, um, is that pulling them down into the band below? So that's how you're going to mark. Now, I gave the example of somebody who might be really uh, technically gifted, but might not be able to... Um, uh, it explain what, what it is that they've done. So you might have a learner who maybe is getting four marks on, on this first uh, marking grid here. So they might get four here and they might get four here for their demonstrating their understanding of the style. So they'll have eight marks overall, but when it comes to actually making the creative choices and um, doing the uh, creating the music, they might be really, really effective. So they might pull themselves up here and get you know, 30 to, to 36 marks on these three bands here. So those 36 marks plus the eight for their um, being able to discuss what it is they were going to do is going to add up to a fairly good mark. So 36 plus eight, we're at, we're at 44 already. Compare that to a learner who perhaps is moderately good at all the things. So they might get seven for each of those, uh, seven or eight marks for each of those uh, grids. They're going to come out with a similar grade but that's compensatory. So the one, the learner who has um, shown really good uh, technical ability, but an inability to talk about it is going to come out with a similar grade to a learner who is um, fairly good across all competencies. And obviously the opposite is true as well. If there's somebody who's really good at explaining and talking and thinking about their music, but they maybe aren't necessarily as good at performing or recording or playing, then they will come out with a similar grade to the learner who has got the opposite profile. We know that learners have got what we call spiky profiles. And this just seems like as a, as a teacher and an assessor, this just seems like a much fairer way of assessing our young musicians.
So that's how the, the PSAs are going to look and how they're going to work. Let's head back to the presentation now. And let's look at um, some of the internal components and how they're going to work. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of the two components and the teaching content. We're going to look at the learning outcomes. They were previously called learning aims, uh, an overview of the tasks within them, the timings and the marks, uh, assessment controls and conditions, and how you need to hold the learner work securely between those sessions, what you need to do to manage the assessment and the optional formats of learner evidence. So let's jump across and go back to the specification. And we're going to start with component two. So we've looked at component three. We're now going to look at component two. So if you think about what I was showing you with component three, they needed to be ready to respond to that brief on um, either performing and creating or um, producing and creating music. So component two leading up to component three they're going to be able they're going to be looking at skills developments they're going to be developing those skills that are required the professional skills in the music industry such as time management and identifying resources etc and how they're going to plan and communicate their skills development so um, as part of their submission for component three they're going to need to hand in a um uh a review which can include some screenshots and talking about what it is that they've done so it's really important in component two they've had that teaching and learning to make sure they're able to explain their journey and have that organized approach to communicating what they've done and how they can comment on their work and obviously in component two they're going to be doing that by commenting on their own and others work as well but then the main part for component learning and B is to develop those processes. Um, they're going to choose two out of these three pathways, so either performance, creating or production, and they're going to develop their skills. So they're going to have a look at the development process, their individual development routine, routines, and how they're going to develop those skills and techniques. So this is going to be a long and thin process during which um, they will look at developing skills appropriate to certain styles, um, their development of the creation of content and material. And then if they're doing music performance, they will um, also look at these bullet points. And for creating original music, they will look at these ones. And for production, they will do this. Now, it's recommended because learners are going to all have to do either performing and creating or producing and creating in component three, it's recommended that um, all learners do some creating um, during component two. So looking at how they can explore and extend ideas using structure, using rhythmic and melodic patterns and development of harmony, because they're gonna, as you, as you can see from looking at component three, they're gonna need to use those techniques, whether they're doing production or performance, they're gonna need to rework a track. So they're going to have to understand how to use some music creation techniques. So what the assessment will look like, what the teaching and learning will look like, sorry, is probably a series of short, um, short tasks spread over a period, a longer period of time. This might be that you give them a, um, the learners are given a formative assessment. So it might be you're going to do a short performance in three weeks of a, any song of your choice. And they might just go through, have a go at learning that piece and through that, learn about their practice routines and keeping a diary. You might say to them, I'd like you to um, do a, a short creating task. So we're going to create uh, drum beats in three different styles using um, a door. And you're going to show them how they might do that you might give them a melody to which they need to add chords you might need give them some chords to which they uh, have a melody so it's probably going to be some short uh, short tasks that will last three to six weeks similar to what you did what we do in key stage three and get those learners to eventually over a period of a couple of months be setting their own tasks so for example you might have a learner that decides they really want to work on um, their production skills and they want to work on using effects and they've decided that they're going to look at how to create a wobble bass to or a reese bass to create a drum and bass or a um a, a drum and bass track so they're going to look at the ways to do that and they're going to set themselves a task maybe three or four weeks how they're going to do that certain tutorials certain techniques they're going to explore and keep a diary of that so that's the idea that by the end of component two learners are able to do that independently so you might start off a bit more structured giving them those short tasks um 
of how they're going to develop those skills and by the end they're doing them themselves independently and that might include things for performers about warm-ups about exercises about techniques etc here are the suggestions for delivery so participating in workshops um, and you may choose to deliver this alongside component one um, so there will be elements of the delivery so when we're talking about time management etc um, and rehearsal that is going to come up in component one so some of these bits will um, be able to be co-delivered and then tells you a bit about the assignments and how you're going to assess the assignments we've had a look through that and you know on the psa where to find that um, and then you have the mark grids so they're in the specification as well as on the pearson set assignment so that's a uh, component two the music skills development um, let's have a quick look at component one. Oh, sorry Let's go back to specification. So component one, this is your learners have just arrived in your uh, Key Stage 4 class. And I, I commonly refer to this as Key Stage 3 on steroids. So the idea is your learners have arrived. You have a smaller group, probably, or a more dedicated group of learners that have selected to choose music. You probably have more contact hours with them. And so now you're going to be able to do some similar projects to the ones that you might have done during Key Stage 3, but get a little bit more under the hood. So they need to have an understanding of music, styles of music, and they need to understand the users of uh, how people create music. In order to do that, obviously, they need to understand what musical styles are, who the iconic composers and the impact of technology. And then we need to look at the popular music styles. Um, so through they need to explore five styles, three of which need to come from popular music. So one from group one, one from group two and one from group three. And then they also need to look at two other styles. So from this other music styles group. So any any two from two of these groups. Um, it's important to note that the EG is indicative, so it's just saying world music might be samba, bangra, African drumming or gamelan, but it might be that in your centre you um, are particularly um, good at calypso and you have a steel pan band, so that might be for group four, you want them to all do steel pans, that's absolutely fine. Um, again, for Western classical styles of music, we've given Baroque, classical, romantic, orchestral, um, that you might look at leitmotif minimalism and serialism you might look at them as uh, as examples of what might denote western classical music styles of music but you might find something else that you want to explore now what's interesting when planning a delivery for component one is that a1 musical styles and the a2 musical elements stylistic features and characteristics need to be thought about in conjunction when you're you're selecting your um uh, selecting your areas of study. So learners are going to have to be able to talk about all of these bullet points before the EG. So they need to be able to talk about instrumentation, texture, timbre, tonality, scales and modes, harmony, rhythmic techniques, structure, melodic techniques and production. So when you are choosing your style, your tracks or your styles for learners to have a look at here, it's important that you can make sure that there's enough content for them to talk about. So you might need to find something that's got a really good use of production. Um, perhaps you have a look there and you think, well, sampling is a really good one. I want to do hip hop with my learners. So we can we can look at um, hip hop and turntablism, etc. cetera. Um, that might then influence you up here to say, well, if we're going to do hip hop, let's do that in the 70s and 80s. So that might be one of your styles there. You might then come down here and go, well, harmony. OK, well, for me, harmony uh, really speaks of doing um, you know jazz and blues so we're going to make sure that we do some some really good stuff on jazz and blues here so i'm going to choose something that's got some really interesting things on harmony and also that i can do scales and modes there because i can talk about the blues scale um and perhaps i'm also going to look at modes in western classical music and do minimalism so that might be the two that i'm going to i'm going to do there and i'm going to make sure that my learners are learning these elements of music these stylistic features and characteristics um through these pieces so you might decide initially on five styles of music that you think would work really well, but you do really need to come down here and just make sure that um, you are covering all of this unit content through those five styles.
Um, learning outcome B is about how you apply those to create music. So once learners have learned, and this might be done in conjunction, but once they've learned about a particular style, they're then going to realize something in that style. And this is exactly the same as we would always do in Key Stage 3. So learners might learn about a particular style of music and then they will come up with a response to it. So they might learn about Steve Reich and minimalism and they might produce their own um, piece in the style of, and you might do that with year eights. We're well, just going to do the same kind of thing here. They need to have a look at um, uh, if they're going to do musical performance, creating or producing, and they do need to cover all three of them. The kind of things that, that are used by musicians um, to realise their, their music. Um, and we'll have a quick look now at the PSA for component one so that we can have a look at what it is that learners need to produce. Oops, I'll just um, go here. OK, so. Um, so the, for component one, we can have a look at what learners are going to have to produce is for task A, they need to produce um, a portfolio of evidence of, oh sorry, so for task one is about contrast, a portfolio of evidence that demonstrates your understanding of four different styles of music. So they'll have studied five, then you produce a portfolio about four, a maximum of two styles from popular music. So um, essentially that means they can drop one of their and for this this one they can drop one of their popular music ones so they're going to use their two other ones and their two popular music ones it's important to know that these here melody harmony tonality rhythm and structure and instrument and texture timbre and production they are um sorry i'll just uh, show you here they are on the specification aren't they that's what we just went through um for the specification here OK, so those are the bits there. So that's why I'm, I was saying you need to make sure. Let me just find that there. You need to make sure that in that styles portfolio, they've had the teaching there, compositional features and sonic features. They then produce this portfolio, at least one short musical example of your chosen music styles. This can be pre-existing or found a YouTube video. It could be an embedded audio file. It could be something that they've created themselves. So that'd be really nice if they go, look, this is this is an example of a reggae song and this is me playing some reggae. Um, and then they also need to have this individual commentary where they talk about um, those things that, we, that we've studied. So how those styles and elements of music um, define that as idiomatic of that style. Um, and approximately five hours to complete task one. So you're going to have to have five, that would be five lessons. Um, tells them what they need to hand in and how many marks. The next bit that they need, then need to do is to create uh, three 30 to 60 second examples of products. So a product is a performance, a, um, a song, a, uh, sorry, a performance and audio recording. So maybe they're going to show their multi-track techniques, some music for media, film computer games an original song and a door project so they need to create three 30 to 60 second examples of ideas so remember it's not completed tracks but ideas for music products using a range of realization techniques so they need to cover three from that list so they might hand in as part of their portfolio a live performance of them playing the chorus of um, a particular song they might hand in a um a 30 second film clip to which they've composed some music or performed some music uh, alongside it if, you, if they want to be performers um, and maybe um, uh, they've written an original song in a certain style. Um, so obviously the live performances can be cover versions as well. The door project could be an arrangement or a remix of an existing song. So there's going to be something there for all your learners to be able to really show off what they what they can do and what they've learned during component one. Remember, component one is only 36 guided learning hours. Um, so you don't you probably don't want to get too bogged down in loads of detail it's about learners being able to show that they can understand that connection between theory of music elements of music um, certain styles and producing things and performing in certain styles creating in certain styles um, and being able to see the link between those and the music products um, okay Let's return back to the presentation now. So that's about internal components and the set assignments. I think we've covered um, 
quite a lot of them and we know where to find find the information so in terms of applying the marking grid i've been through that i'm just going to give you a quick reminder so your assessment it's in the your assessment decision section of the psa we use this best fit approach we use a simple 12 mark grid and three marks per band structure and that make means that it's easier to make best fit decisions more consistent we've talked about how it's compensatory and they do not align to pmd so they'll come out of that assessment with a raw mark out of 60 and you don't know whether that is pass merit or distinction but as i've said learners could pick those grades up uh, those points up in different competencies depending on their skill set so resubmission. So in this process, once the learners have completed their internal assessments, they've handed the work into you, it's been marked and um, it sh there should be evidence of it being moderated internally. So that might be from a, a colleague uh, where you've got more than one assessor on a course. It's really important. Um, you might have a large cohort. So it's really important that there is some um, moderation that goes on some evidence of moderation to ensure that learners across the two classes are getting the same um, uh, the same marking um, so after you've marked learner work you um, can then give them the opportunity to resubmit work the same resubmission rules apply 15 days to resubmit again this needs to be um, independent the learners need to be able to create this without any further guidance from you general feedback can be given at the point of assessment which tells them where they need to work on but not specific instructions so it might you might say something along the lines of your chord sequence hasn't been developed enough you haven't used extended chords or inversions that would be absolutely fine what you can't say is in order to um, make your chord sequence better i suggest you put in a um uh, an extended chord in the second an f extend an f11 chord in first inversion there so that's far too specific because then that will show them what's going to make their track better once you've gone through that so after those 15 days so you might need to build that into your planning if the learners are going to get up to 15 days and you need to have hit the window for the moderator when are you going to do this assessment after that's done you then submit those marks to the moderator um, if necessary learners can retake internal assessments once during the program using the PSA for the following series so if your learners sit in October they may do it one more time after that so that would probably be the um, the October for January submission you'd probably then do it again in the May submission um, so once marks are submitted to the moderator um, that's not the end of the process but let's have a look at what moderation is going to look like so they'll complete moderation and provide you with direct feedback so you will get feedback on your marking from the moderator so this is different to other rewarding bodies you send in your marks the moderator will give you some feedback and you can then have two weeks to change your initial marks so they might say you've been too lenient on certain learning aims or too um too harsh they will give you that feedback they'll give you the guidance and you can revise your marks based on that guidance once the center marks are then checked um, after that two weeks and if they are reasonably accurate then center marks will be upheld if they're not then an adjustment will be applied across the cohort moderation will be done remotely we're going to use digital transfer of learner work and the sample size is dependent on the size of your cohort any class of fewer than 100 learners there will be a sample of 10 it will be randomly selected and confirmed to you in advance you will have both internal components sampled. There's two windows for moderation in each um, academic year based on the PSA for that series. And the deadline, um, including any resubmission of work and upload marks um, will be mid-December for the December-January series and the first week of May for the May to June series. However, we are conscious that some people might want to get stuff um, sorted early. And so you will be able to have early moderation from early December and early April. So just to remind you of those dates, because sometimes uh, that can be a little bit unclear. So what would happen is, but you would, if you wanted to uh, get early um, sampling completed, then learners would for the oct would down you would download the assessment in october the psa in october learners would sit it and you would make sure that they had those 12 hours plus 
the possible 15 days for resubmission ready for early December to send off um, for moderation. If it was in the second series of the year, then again, you would download the, um, the PSA in January. Learners would sit the 12 or 15 hours for the internal assessments, plus the 15 days resubmission ready to give to your um, moderator by early April, but the latest by the first week of May. So that will significantly reduce administration for you to deliver and assess internal components. No more internal verification. Um, of the assignment briefs and uh, once that work is marked and sent off you'll get that feedback back from your moderator okay so in terms of quality assurance you don't need to internally verify the assessments as they're replaced by those psas moderation will replace standards verification so it'll be a reduction in admin and um, the quality and assurance guidance and forms are currently being updated and you'll be informed when uh, those new ones are available so let's have a look at the availability. So I've mentioned this a few times, but this is a really handy slide to have a look at it. So um, annual January or February assessment series. So the release of PSA is in early October. Again, remember, you're going to have to plan those uh, dates in the number of hours required for the assessment and the resubmission ready for moderation early December to the end of January. However, we know that for our ones, it will be approximately the 15th of December. So um, knowing what music departments are like on the lead up to Christmas, I would imagine most people would want to get that done early. And then your results will come out in early March. If you are looking at the second window each year, then um, it's the May-June assessment series, so that'll be important to tell your exams officer, but the task actually will come out in January. Um, oh, so the externally assessed task will come out in January. Um, in mid-February is when the PSAs for both the internally assessed units will come out. Moderation, early April to uh, the May, approximately the 1st of May. Um, in May will be the submission deadline for external assessment, and then August is results. So here's some possible delivery models that you might want to consider. So um, a two, an example two-year delivery model, learners might do component one, teaching and learning, um, September to January. February to April is when they would do the summative assessment. So they would finish that by early April when you'd send it off for moderation. Then they might start the teaching and learning for component two. And when they arrive back in September, have a refresher on their skills and how to um, uh, respond to the PSA. That will then be published in October when you would then give that to your learners and uh, you have that tied up by the start of December, ready for you to do your rehearsal for your Christmas performance. And it would be submitted to your moderator then. They would then come back after Christmas, receive the external assessment, which they would sit through till May. And the results for component two and component three would come out at the end of August. You can see there that component three delivery is designed to be carried out throughout the entire course. So it's probably worth having a look at um, how you can co-deliver some elements of component three alongside components one and two. We do know that some people have a three year key stage four, and this would be a, a particular model, uh, an example of a model that you might want to use. So component one, uh, delivery year one, followed by the February, April summit of assessments, some delivery for component two, um, long and thin spread from the end of the first year throughout the start of the second year and then component two summit of assessment in that um, February to April window. Component three delivered May to July continued into the start of year three and then the assessment at the end of year three. So grading is going to change as well. So learners must sit and achieve an outcome for all components. However, there's no minimum grade outcome to gain the qualification. So they don't need to get a level one pass for any component. So unclassified, so just sitting and being entered for the, um, uh, sitting and entering something for the uh, component is considered an outcome. There will be raw marks outputted for each component. So that is the mark out of 60. And these will be converted to UMS points. So points are then uh, put together to work out the overall qualification. The individual components will be graded on a six grade scale. So from level two distinction to level one pass, there will be no level one distinction that is done on individual components. 
um, oh, sorry, there's no distinction star on individual components. But overall, there is a level two distinction star. And that will, um, learners can only get a level two distinction star if they get a distinction in all three components and they get enough points to meet the threshold for distinction star. The final grade is an aggregation of those UMS, UMS points for each component. Like I keep saying, it's compensatory, so a higher performance in some components could be balanced out by lower in others. Um, and yeah, I've said that about the distinction star. So awarded if a learner has achieved a level two distinction in each component and the minimum US UMS required for the level two distinction star at qualification level. Let's just have a quick look at the specification um, and have a look at the calculation of those grades. So you can see here, so out of, so they will get a mark out of 60 and from the marks out of 60 will then come through to these boundaries. These will be dynamic boundaries each time. So we can't say what those would be, but once they get a mark out of 60, it might be that that gives them a level two pass, which would be 54 UMS points out of 90 to take forward. Um, if they don't receive the standard, they will get something in the range of 0 to 26 points. So that's for components one and two. They would add them together with their component three points. And once you've added those three UMS points together, remember all of these are out of 60 marks, but depending on the boundaries and how many marks they get out of 60, they'll get a certain number of points, which is out of 90 for the internal and 120 for the external. You add them together and depending on where they land, they could get um, any of these, these grades for the qualification. Hopefully that's clear. There will be further training coming up on um, marking and qualification. So just a quick summary about how it's going to benefit learners. So like we keep saying, it's compensatory, no longer any minimum grade requirements. And the moderation process for you includes direct feedback. So that really allows you to address any issues before the impact on learner results. So um, it's a unique way of doing moderation. And I think it really puts the learner at the center because they're not going to get punished for any mistakes that you've made. You have a chance to get some direct feedback from your moderator and then to um, to amend those uh, based uh, on that feedback. So the current timeline is that December 2021 was when the publication, September 22 and 22 first teaching, December 22, January 23 for the first internal component moderation and May 24 for the first external. So for the current tech awards, final registrations were in September 2021, which means that the final performance tables is summer 23. There's going to be some new support for delivery, which is available on the Pearson website, including teacher delivery guides, a transition and mapping guide, sample assessment materials, marking training, which is coming up um, shortly, uh, standardization events, access to subject specialist, and there are some paid for resources for the active learn teacher packs. We're not going to have any uh, question and answers today because this is a pre recorded event. But I'd just like to take the opportunity to say thank you very much for for watching. And if you have any further questions, then support is available through uh, Jeffrey Hole, who's our subject advisor, and he can be contacted at teachingmusic at pearson.com. There will also be um, more training available, so please keep an eye on the uh, Pearson website. And thank you very much, and good luck with the delivery of the course. If you're, oh, if you're interested in becoming part of the team uh, for the Redeveloped Tech Awards, then there's an express an expression of interest form here. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day.